work that uh, um, uh, Hilda and Paul have done is uh, today considered uh, some of the most innovative work in, uh, in Belgium uh, currently. The exhibition that uh, we are showing at the moment in the front members room uh, focuses on one of their projects, uh, the Carton Nasi in Antwerp, uh, in which uh, they have worked with the artist Christina Iglesias, um, and uh, they are transforming the old harbor warehouses into offices, halls for uh, uh, dock workers, as well as an archaeological textile museum. The collaboration of Hilda and uh, Paul uh, with uh, the Spanish sculptor uh, Christina Iglesias transformed the usual cursory relationship between artists and architects into a closely integrated project, both as a thing and uh, as a process, the, the work that results and in fact the way that they collaborate together. In addition to the Katan Nasi project, uh, Paul and Hilda have also worked on a variety of other projects including single family homes, uh, social housing, as well as uh, larger scale urban design uh, developments. Uh, but it is uh, uh, precisely for focusing on the relationship between uh, art and architecture which really distinguishes uh, their uh, work from uh, much of uh, what is practiced today. Would you please uh, join me in welcoming uh, Paul Rogueret, who is going to give the lecture. Uh, good evening. Um, thank you very much. Um, we are very honored to uh, be here this evening at um, um, architectural association, which is for us also um, some kind of center. We always are looking at what what is happening over here, and um, and um, at this, uh, it's a wonder if you are or if you will be interested in in our work. We are uh, specifically really practicing artists, architects, and um, most of our experiences and the, the way we are thinking about architecture and design in is uh, a follow-up out of our experience as really um, everyday working on projects and, and building practice. Um, it's um, a little bit specific uh, for the situation of architects in Belgium that um, it's a very, very protected profession in Belgium. And it means that whatever you want to do, you need architects. And that means also that as very young, as, as you are very young, you're already building. The, and uh, so some your ideas, the ideas you have and the position you're taking comes with, with the practice of, of doing the profession, which is that's very important to know. And also for us, it came by making one project and another one, and then a third one, and the, the referring from one project to the other one that we um, maybe have found uh, a way of of express ourselves, but still uh, thinking on this lecture I would give tonight, it was uh, nearly un impossible for us to really to analyze our own work. It's so hard to say what 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 is specif specific about it. But um, as Mr. Mosavi told you, I will. We w we had the chance. To um, to relate in our work very often to art today, and it comes maybe because we are extremely interested in what what is going on in art, and also mm, my, personally, I've always I've never been in doubt to be become an artist because I really knew very early that I wasn't one. Um, but I was uh, very young also uh, interested in 
art and art and artists were really my heroes when I was young. Um, so lots of lot of our um, really love for for what is happening in our dance goes for uh, and, and our uh, um, and our work goes to art and we are maybe a little bit part only partly interested in architecture. Um, also the fact that I was teaching for more than 15 years at uh, Royal Academy in Ghent, not to architects but to young students in art, in painting, in sculpture and in photography and film, telling them about what is going on in architecture was for me really helpful. Uh, the discussions we had in uh, I had with them was something which was um, uh, very capital in, in, in our thinking. Um, and also m um, we had, we were very lucky, I, thi I, th I think that we met some persons, people in our life and which whom we had uh, talked about um, about this relation, art versus um, architecture, and um, when we were when at the moment we were not really constructing, then that it, it, it were very fruitful discussions. With it were very big fights also. I think I had with uh, some artists um, very hard um, to. I think it's a it's a good thing to to try to consider what is really separating you. Uh, what's the difference then say immediately why we, we are doing the same thing, we are busy with the same thing thing and what, what makes us different uh, art and architecture. But um, and that was uh, that was at that moment the discussion what which, which tried to find um, um, some some elements to, to distinguish the two um, the two uh, ways of expression, and um, but also, of course, we found a lot of similarities between uh, practicing um, um, or being builders of of making of, of making buildings and uh, uh, making a piece of art. And I, I think um, essentially um, before everything, before all the knowledge you can have about both um, you, you are working and you are depending on very personal experience and I, I believe it's very, it's not so often mentioned in, in the field of uh, of architecture, but I believe the drive you need to make a project is a very personal one, and um, it's of course the same thing for uh, making a piece of art. And um, so, at on that on that path, you are still walking on the on the same path. But I believe that um, it is a very strange thing, a very particular thing happening at a certain moment in, in the processes of making art and, 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 and the processes of making architecture that at all, all of a sudden you divide and uh, with, the, uh, with, with this content of personal experience. I think it's, it's difficult to explain but I think that um, in the w work of art you're becoming more and more explicit in, in showing this very intimate and personal experience and, and, and I think it's, uh, it's uh, for us and, and to our, uh, or, or we believe that it is a something which is necessary in making um, um, a work, a building that this, this personal experience becomes more and more like a hidden and it's a necessarily, it is a, uh, to, uh, to our opinion, it's necessary that this, this 
um, personal experiences which is absolutely fundamental for making um, making an interesting work but at the same time we believe that this this experience has uh, uh, has to be interiorized in the building, um, nearly hidden, uh, nearly hidden into the walls to, to make to make of uh, of a building um, uh, something which is which is which is which is losing its authorship uh, in in some kind of uh, um, but to our uh, feeling. Uh, vital uh, anonymity and uh, that's something which was for us um, I believe uh, uh, essential in some of our projects this kind of state of anonymity another thing that was going on what we were thinking about in this in this situation uh, and uh, we, we always talk about art in 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 a kind of personal, uh, if it, because we know we, we have in our in our friends a group of friends that are mainly artists, so we talk always in a very personal way on about what is making art and so on. But we know also the the, the situation uh, of the artists. Uh, or we know about it, and I think um, and that we feel uh, on on some parts very similar that um, um, that, bo that, that there is a kind of balance in, in the situation. I think the, uh, the art artist brings his messages in, in, a, in, a, in a very wide field of, of the media. And um, at, as we do, as we make architecture, we, 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 we we are making our pieces which are always quite particular and quite small, also in a, in a kind of the big urban situation. Sometimes is this urban situation very chaotic, it's and, and it's mainly very chaotic. Or, or on, on in other cases, this uh, urban situation is structured, is, has some kind of basis that was once considered as an idea still um, we feel uh, we, f we, we, we can only think about uh, our projects as a kind of fight against this situation and I think um, uh, uh, for artists is, is, is this also I believe uh, the main the main feeling that they have um, towards the media uh, this flood of images and messages coming over us every day, and then it's so hard, I think, to make uh, to make a statement uh, still, which is which which is which is consistent and which is uh, um, and uh, which is in, um, maybe important. I think there is a kind of similarity in this kind of relation to, uh, to something surrounding in your activity uh, between uh, what artists do and what the architect or the architects are doing. Um, and a third element uh, uh, which I would like to point is that that we are an Creators, the architects are creators of realities, and that's maybe the point that where we are very separated from art. Art has to do essentially something, and maybe they don't like to hear it, the artists. But that I still say it, and they're sometimes very angry when I'm saying it. But they are working with the illusion, and uh, I think it's necessary that they work with. Uh, illusion uh, they make images and um, I believe that that is the the essential point that separates us separates us so much from each, each other that 
um, we believe that the essence of architecture has been uh, uh, some, uh, of course we, we, we create images, of course we, we create uh, something which is visual and which, which can, can be seen, but the idea of the image, and maybe in, in the, in the, uh, in the it's, it's better understandable in the French expression of the l'image, is something which is not uh, really the essence of, uh, of architecture. I think architecture creates essentially place. And we had uh, some kind of a credo, a, a belief that when the two would come together, together the, the places that were, are offered, that are, they should be generally of, uh, generously uh, offered by architecture, that when they would be filled in with the images of art, that there's something could happen uh, which is particular. And that was the simple program we had uh, in our work. Very often it doesn't happen in our works, but we were lucky and now and then it was happening that we could um, introduce the piece of art on, I think, a very f um, fundamental basis in some of the projects we did. And, and I think, um, um, although we never believed in, uh, we never believed in something like, um, like, um, uh, Gesamtkunst, like something that, that you could never find uh, the difference of, uh, see the difference between the, 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 the art and the architecture or something, that space and, and art would come together. We are of, particularly of this generation, and I think it's, uh, it's the generation which started to work as artists in the beginning of the 80s and, and, and we're proposing their works. Uh, we are thinking about artists as, as, as Thomas Schutte or, or uh, Jan Verkruysen and uh, um, yeah, some of the people we work together with, uh, with, uh, with Juan Munoz, Cristina Iglesias, it's really our generation. And we really were in this position from don't touch my place or something, but still we were, we were looking at each other a lot and there was also this in, in tremendous interest also from artists in that period in, in architecture and also as a possibility, as an expression. Uh, I, I'm thinking about, uh, uh, for instance, some, some of the workers, works of, of Thomas Schutte who was uh, as a very young artist presenting uh, what he called bunker for artists, is kind of bunker, I don't know if it is a good English word, for artists, which mean like a, like a shelter for the, for, for the artists. And I think we found something like uh, similar in our position. Um, and um, yeah, at that moment we were um, yeah, confronting, we were, were discussing Still, we were very open both on, on both camps to try to do, to do something together and in some of the works I will show you, you will see it. Um, down. Um, maybe I said uh, something, uh, maybe you felt something that, that uh, something that I, I have to say which is very important for us that we are um, architects that um, mainly do kind of small work and uh, we would like to do a little bit bigger, uh, bigger but still it has something to do with our, our feelings about a lot of things and we, we can only see uh, as working as like making traces on some places in, in something which is um, um, yeah, 
this, uh, uh, this city, the, the town, or uh, the, the urban uh, uh, total situation. We, we never felt that we could be the uh, persons who will transform this reality completely and, and uh, into a new uh, world. We, are, we feel fine with that. We, we, we don't believe it also. It, 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 we don't believe in it and we, we that, that um, and the possibility we have, all, we have a very, very, very ambiguous relation towards uh, urbanism and, and the profession of to make urbanism. Um, still, um, it's not clear for us at the moment. Maybe we, we are going in that direction, in that, uh, in that direction. But still, we are uh, trying to get things under control uh, out of our buildings. It's the only possibility for us. And it's maybe, it maybe has to do something uh, uh, with our situation in, in, in Flanders and Belgium in which the uh, urbanism is a very low quoted uh, uh, thing. Uh, it doesn't happen. The, 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 uh, very few people are studying it and so on. Everybody is building and is building and is building. But maybe, s since I, ha s I have a lot of images to show to you, so I, w I would not talk too long before, and I would start with uh, the project uh, uh, we are presenting here at the AA School. It's the, uh, it's a, it's the, the project calls, uh, it's an, um, uh, the Kaptun Nazi in Antwerp. Antwerp is, uh, um, a city uh, in uh, the, the second city in Belgium, and it's a, it has a very big harbor. Um, uh, it's near Atos, <laughs> that's why I forgot. Um, and um, why did we chose this project? And I think many reasons uh, uh, are exemplar. Uh, it's a good example of, I think, our work. Uh, and one of the of the things which is, is particular at the work we are doing, doing is that you don't see it very well. You, we, are, we are very often workin, working on, on very hidden places somewhere on in, in, um, uh, in, 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 in not in, in an important street or something, or, and you cannot see very clear where, where we were interfering still the buildings look very different after, after we, were, we, were, we passed. Um, this is a, a project that um, is um, about a, a kind of remapping uh, a, series, a series of buildings, uh, a series of warehouses in, uh, in a neighborhood in Antwerp, which is a, a neighborhood which is uh, developed in the mid uh, 19th century uh, outside the walls of, uh, of the city. And it was, the, it, it was a, a neighborhood, uh, a development of the harbor. And in this neighborhood, uh, specific companies, they call them all Nazis, but they go, they, they go and they're back to, to medieval corporations. Um, settled their uh, warehouses to pack, uh, to, to, to storage um, specific things. In this case, the Kaptun Acid means, means the cotton company. Uh, th these were warehouses where they stocked uh, 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 cotton. And, um, but of course, the harbor, they w went more and more north, and this area uh, got a lot of these warehouses which became empty. But there is a tendency to reuse them uh, all, not only this company, but uh, uh, other ones also. You have, for instance, also a tobacco company, a wool company, and um, a metal company, and so on. It, 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 it was only allowed by this kind of workers to ship uh, wool or cotton or so on, and it goes back to that. Uh, 
but they asked us a very complex uh, program of, uh, you see the very wide streets and narrow streets, uh, it's a really already an urban plan of the 19th century, in which a very mixed, a very mixed uh, building uh, uh, are, are set up. Um, this company asked us to, to do very different things in these buildings, mainly offices, but um, also uh, very contra contradictionary things. Also a, a small museum for archaeological textile, which is not real, the space is al already ready, but uh, it's not, ready, not yet installed. And um, also, uh, it's also a place where really workers, uh, dock workers, are coming in the night to, uh, to, to get their job because they are always hired for one day and they come in this building in the night. So it's a very mixed program. And it's only the first part which is ready at the moment that we are going to construct really new building, a new kind of linking building. Uh, maybe I have, uh, yeah, this is a bit of, I should go on maybe to the model a little bit. There are all the buildings. I try to to make some pictures very quickly for uh, this uh, conference about of the model. Um, we will construct this uh, linking building at the end of the year and we will renovate this one um, um, also together. So one part is ready, the two warehouses you were seeing and this linking building and this uh, third warehouse build is the the, the next phase in, in the world. Um, what I wanted to say about this uh, project and, and what is maybe a little bit particular in other projects we did, we, uh, uh, we did I will show you a house we were working on for 10 years, is a kind of attitude maybe we learned from artists and uh, uh, using this, the the, the things, the, the spaces, the building, uh, uh, and, and use them as found. I mean, um, just by pointing them, that's, this is my space. Uh, something which is, has been done also by artists. It was a space they, d they didn't do themselves, but the space as something, as a kind of existing thing, and just saying this is the space we are going to 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 uh, to give a place just in our idea of, of making, of, of remapping the building. Um, this is us, it's already a work of architecture and uh, we, we did a lot of this kind of, uh, of just uh, considering the space. And, um, but we tried to give some particularity to each, each one of these three warehouses by uh, using um, different roofs for them and different way, different ways the light is going to come into these buildings because they have this uh, uh, these buildings they are they were really meant to stock uh, things in the dark or in the semi dark and uh, was what what was needed was bringing uh, for this project bringing light into this um, to this um, um, volumes and the only way you could could do it except for this building which is now but for the two other ones which are, which have this very narrow street facades is to to find light coming from the roof into the uh, into the building and um, an another thing was uh, maybe I go on a little bit um, wow um, another thing is like what I say like pointing spaces is also like s telling this are the different structures uh, of the of the building and this was like a team for us to confront these structures and we did it uh, you, you had for instance this kind of wood very uh, archaic uh, wood structure which is uh, wh which was uh, carrying one one of the buildings and the other one next next door was a concrete structure and uh, what was a team for us was and, and, and try to, to develop something was just confronting this 
uh, different structural, uh, structural fields by making uh, openings from one building to the other one. And sometimes you have this overlapping images of, uh, of very, uh, very uh, contradictionary structural systems. For instance, in this case, uh, the, the wood against the concrete in the other building. Um, that's what I mean. Um, so this was like uh, one thing, like seeing what is what is uh, happening in this, what what is existent in this place, and uh, what can we do with it, and uh, and this confronting of of uh, of this uh, um, also uh, of these structures was one of the uh, well one of the strategies we used. Another thing uh, which was um, quite important for us was that uh, all these bu buildings were done on in different periods and in different times that they never had the same uh, measurements they all were they all had a different kind of base and uh, and that was an element that we uh, we wanted to use and a, a scheme that was for us very important that that we maybe we could try to 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 show this, um, uh, this uh, like sliding images over each other of structures uh, passing by the window in different kind of base and measure measurements of base, which give a kind of uh, of, of of slow slow dynamic uh, to the building. Uh, uh, it's the same, for instance, what is happening when you are in the train and the train st station and you're looking out of the window and another train is passing by and and this image is which is which is like uh, overlapping each other but which is sliding one over over the other one it's an um, it's a tactic to give a dynamic to a building which we al also used in our in our um, um, our pavilions which which I will show later on um, we um, we brought the lights uh, down by opening some floors, and at a certain moment, we 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 found that that uh, that something should happen in the project, something exterior, something f from uh, uh, from outside of us. But we we already had made draw drawings to bring a serial a serial of. Uh, of um, openings in the roof, bringing light down. But uh, in a very early stadium of the project, we found that maybe it could be interested, uh, interesting to talk about uh, this light and light coming in and to do something more profound and more than just uh, a kind of treating of light, something which, which had more meaning. Uh, and we talked about it uh, to, to Cristina Iglesias, who is a, a Spanish sculptor. And uh, we were always interested in her work because her works were like, like um, uh, sculptures. You could go uh, a little bit in. They were like lean, they were like sculptures leaning against the wall, and they were like spaces for one person. And and also this this element of translucence, which were in some of her uh, sculptures, uh, sculptures were uh, she was using that, uh, that, that, that 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 inside space in her sculptures, uh, which was formed or modulated also by the light who is coming in, and um, they had always this kind of um, empathical quality. And um, we're talking about her. She was at the, at the beginning um, very, um, how can I say, uh, wrestling a little bit by uh, by this proposal because it would be uh, a project that was that would be uh, a project that would be also very functional, and that's something maybe it's a kind of barrier for an artist to do something which is at a certain moment. Uh, functional because this sculptures and we still we always call it sculptures. This sculpture sculptures are bringing in light 
in, in the space. And um, um, that was something, uh, it, it created the kind, uh, it, cre it still creates a kind of ambiguous, ambiguous uh, situation. Another thing also was that uh, why precisely uh, we invited Cristina Iglesias uh, uh, because of uh, in her work is some kind of uh, a critical relation uh, uh, towards her own um, country, our, our own culture, which, are kind, which is a kind of mixture of the Basque culture and, uh, and uh, the, the south of Spain, uh, of Andalusia. And uh, she always was uh, very interested in, in, in the, of course, the very important Arabic culture in and Andalusia. But she she uses she uses in a in a kind of uh, critical way, uh, not very obvious way. But if you know, for instance, the Cathedral of Burgos, then you understand that this kind of materials and bringing light into space uh, is is uh, something which belongs to her background. And uh, we thought that maybe knowing that um, that we were working for a company. Which, uh, which is trading all over the world, uh, that it would be interesting to bring something from a different uh, place into the building. That was what we were interested in, a kind of, um, yeah, something that uh, not only looks uh, very different, but also, also the material, which has a kind of, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, very specific material. It's, 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 uh, Alabast, uh, alabast uh, uh, which is a stone which is translucent and colored glass, something we never would think about to use in our building, but um, yeah, we, we wanted to, to, to make it ourselves like difficult and to accept this. And that's what, um, uh, what the result is of this uh, uh, thing at the moment. Another thing also what we really, really loved was that if you know the neighborhood, it's like a kind of a harsh place uh, in Antwerp. Uh, uh, it's it's a uh, it's a very yeah popular uh, place, and uh, um, yeah um, to bring something fra extremely fragile in this area, that uh, that the building was like carrying some kind of uh, uh, treasure, and uh, you only discover it by going into the building at the first moment you, do, you don't see anything but all of the sudden you are confronted with this uh, uh, with this sculptures and you and it was also like an experience to see this uh, to, to see sculpture in a very different way like uh, completely above you and uh, and then all of the sudden you all also see it uh, from uh, uh, from another um, point of view. That was an interesting thing, for instance, also this, um, that, that all of a sudden these elements are like dancing uh, uh, in front of the windows. Um, this kind of very different perception of these things, uh, things was something we were interested in. We were also very curious how this would, would be working uh, uh, in, a, in a working uh, area, in a working uh, uh, situation. Uh, what, what would be the effect of such a thing for people who are working there for eight hours a day? Um, would there be some kind of, of um, relation with, uh, with this thing? It's something we want to explore further on in, in uh, other projects. And in, in the continuation of the project, I mean. Yeah, I will. Uh, oh, this is the end. Yeah. Um, a very small project we did in. Uh, there's no no chronological. Um, and it's, it's, it's a project that was for us very essential, but we made it in the pro this, this uh, 
exhibition architecture in in um, uh, 86 so it's already uh, more than 10 years ago and it was a very specific exhibition a, uh, a choice of uh, foreign uh, curators on uh, Belgian uh, art and one of the curators Kasper Koenig has, has chosen this artist uh, uh, René Heivaert which was um, uh, actually an architect before and it seems that he even has worked uh, in the States and even there's a kind of meat that he, 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 he in, the, in the 50s he was in the office of Miss van der Rohe but he was very ill and he couldn't uh, continue the profession of uh, architect and, and he was an artist uh, for the rest of his life making very fragile work very yeah, some things he really could he could make uh, without big uh, physical efforts, um, and uh, so the work was also difficult to show, and there was a kind of um, yeah like uh, medieval atmosphere in his uh, work, and and that was the first time we we were creating spaces for uh, particular particular works of one artist and it was done in an abbey in Ghent in our hometown and uh, we were using the sequence of the windows uh, in, in the corridors of the abbey and we made like shell, uh, shelters for this, um, uh, this works which were sometimes made out of paper and out, out of uh, uh, plastic and things uh, like that and uh, it was also trying to to it was an experiment for us how what you can do with uh, natural light and how can you can you can you modulate this light for uh, this um, specific work there was also it was also a very simple idea uh, of uh, knowing that this artist uh, I, have, I didn't know if I mentioned that he was not living anymore at that moment. He just died a few months before the exhibition. Um, that, um, that it was like the idea of a house, a simple house with the different rooms you have uh, in the house and uh, also things like a kitchen and, and a bedroom. And uh, because his pieces, the, the pieces he made what had a kind of like domestic feeling. They, had, they were not practical but they had like they were like tools you use in 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 in, uh, in a house and um, so we we what we we created this kind of imaginary house for for this work you know, like also we we, we at, at that moment we, we, we also made very narrow spaces for instance and uh, like corridors and, and rooms just like what is happening in in um, in a house, and uh, I, I, I think also it was like a little bit important to to feel what contemporary art could be in a domestic uh, situation, uh, which was very different of of the 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 places where uh, um, art was shown at that moment. It was mainly shown in, in factories, in big halls, very open and wide spaces. And, and this was a, a very essential experience for us. Uh, what, what can you do with the normal sizes of rooms and things? And, and, and it, was, it was an experiment which was uh, uh, very helpful for our, um, um, for our uh, our pavilion project. A very small, sometimes a, very, a project can be very spo small, but can you offer you a lot of, of um, help uh, to continue in a, cer a certain kind of uh, direction of thinking and, and experience. Yeah. There were more things like uh, uh, we, 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 were, uh, we were doing more in this exhibition, for instance, this hall, existing hall, uh, and we only uh, 
put again a bench in, in a place for contemporary art, which was very unusual at that moment, that you could go and sit down and look at the paintings. Uh, this is for another artist, uh, Raoul de Keyser. I should continue. And then um, later on, that, that this is our uh, uh, project of uh, a part of the work we did. We work uh, of the, we did for the Documenta uh, uh, number nine in Kassel, and uh, the Documenta is uh, an, uh, an exhibition of contemporary art, which is going, which takes place in in Kassel every five years since, I believe, uh, ninety. Uh, 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 65 or something. Yeah, 1965 was the first documenta and it was uh, uh, and, uh, nearly every five years, sometimes a little bit longer. The first documentas, they were made by uh, the founder of the documenta, Arnold Bode, but the lo the, the since 72, Every documenta uh, is made by, s by a different curator. Uh, the documenta of 92 was made by the Ghent curator and somebody with which we were talking already since the 70s about art and architecture, uh, Jan Hood, and he um, invited us to, to help and to be in the crew of the a very huge exhibition. Uh, uh, it's it's an exhibition which is really uh, in, 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 in like uh, eight different places in the city of Kassel, Kassel using uh, ex existing musea and but also using uh, spaces uh, uh, of. Uh, but there is this enormous garden. Uh, uh, in Kassel, and, and it's the, this garden is called uh, the Friedrichshau Aue, which was uh, an 18th century garden and it was completely destroyed uh, by the war. And one of the first things which were r r again set up after the war was the reconstruction of this garden, which is a national monument. And this garden is always used in every documenta. Uh, as a matter of fact, the first the documenta was like a part of the, of the, the, the of the garden of the first show, uh, showing the garden to the public, and there was a part uh, uh, for art, and it was the first documenta. But later on, the documenta became a very famous exhibition. And, uh, also and the question of the garden came again up in this, uh, in this document, well, how we will use the garden. And um, most documentas, the garden was always the place for sculpture, sculptures in a park. And um, it was something uh, I was discussing a lot, and I, I said to Jan that I never was very very, and I never found it very strong to put sculptures around in a park in a green situation, and uh, that it's only in, in historical gardens that I found good uh, examples of it. And so, yeah, what, would, what will you do? Said I said to me, maybe we use the garden for pa painting, or what painting could be in our in our um, in our time, because painting is a the most discussed uh, medium in, uh, in, in, in contemporary art. Still, it's, uh, it's alive, of course. Uh, but maybe it would be interesting to bring paintings in a park, in, in, a, in, a, in a landscape, which is the, na the, the, the origin of painting, if you, in, in, a, in, a, in a very simple classification of, of the arts, you could say that painting uh, always shows you a window to the world, to the landscape, and sculpture is always like a representation of the human fi figure. Let's do painting in the park, but how we will do it. And also, let's do something that, like a concentration of, uh, in the park. No, nothing, not spreading out things, but like concentrate on one place. Um, and um, in when we were thinking about the project, uh, 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 on this project, 
uh, how one of the things was uh, a very functional uh, uh, thing that the, the buildings should be uh, should be there for 100 days and then disappear, De definitely disappear, because the park is a monument and there can be there can't be a building uh, uh, there for all uh, all the time. And uh, another thing was that at that moment, in we were working on the project in, in 91, that every that it was really happening in Germany, the unification of Germany and and and. Uh, and the East uh, countries, which became uh, accessible and open, but it all happened by people who were uh, uh, going away from uh, the DDR by trains and uh, going to, at that time, to Prague and to Czechoslovakia to go away to, as a kind of fugitives to uh, by trains. And this image of the train uh, came up in our minds, together with uh, another thing that the discussion on art was at that moment that it's so hard to, to define what art uh, is at the moment, what kind of, what, what is the mainstream of art, what, 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 it's impossible. It was very, it was very clear in, in the 60s you had pop art or you had uh, uh, abstract in the 50s, abstract ab expressionism, or you had conceptual art, or you had uh, uh, minimal art, uh, but it's, it was impossible uh, c beginning from uh, going uh, from the 80s and suddenly in the 90s, and still it's going on. You cannot say what is going on in art at the moment. And uh, uh, there is no, no one one label to say this is art, this is art is, uh, uh, takes this program, is concerned, uh, is talking about this. And um, it was very difficult. And at a certain moment, the, the word uh, of uh, displacement felt in a discussion, discussion that the, the generation of artists who are working now have all this background in, their, in the back of their minds of like, for instance, minimal art or, or conceptual art, but they are doing different thi things with it. They are like uh, in isolated position, positions. They are they are treating this knowledge of what has happened before them in a very manieristic way because they use this uh, uh, this style to do something different with it, and uh, right or wrong, but at that moment felt the the word displacement and it was for us a good a good term to think about a project doing a building in a park thinking about trains thinking also about the situation of art which doesn't have really a, a settled place anymore in our in our uh, world in our and in, in the uh, there, there is not so not such a thing this is the place of art it's very hard to define uh, the place of art, uh, the, the physical place of art. It is um, it, the metaphor of the transport was uh, of the transportation was for us maybe a good thing to, to, to use, uh, knowing also that our building would not uh, be there in, uh, after 100 days and the metaphor of something which is going away, which is also at, uh, in, the in the particular site of the document at the different spots there were, it was like now the documenta can start and go all over the world and, and then came up again this image of the trains. During the, during the, uh, during the, I should go on a little bit, during the, um, the design of the building we, we were uh, kind of, uh, we were kind of um, doubting about the, stra the, the, the image of the trains and they had a, at a certain moment another form. They had tilted roofs, which was also very nice. But then it came out when we, we had to do the, the construction, really that this, the, the, the curved roof was the cheapest. So we, we, we were again uh, working on the trains. Um, yeah, it was. Um, should show some. Well, back. Yeah. 
yeah, the, the, the effect of the building was very special, I have to say. Uh, it was more than, than expected, the social effect that this building uh, created. Uh, because uh, it was like we, we lifted, yeah, we tilted up the building. Uh, that I didn't tell, why did we put the building on the ground? For two reasons, that we wanted this lightness of the building and uh, cause of the very ephemeral quality of painting. We, we wanted to, uh, in, 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 in the contrast to what's, what sculpture means and maybe is put on the ground, we wanted this, this, this elevation of the, of the paintings was one reason. Another reason was that, that the, the ground was like moving a lot and it was very complicated to, to put things on the ground. Uh, also, we were not allowed to touch the ground even. We had to, to build up the thing like a, uh, yeah, something you have for a fair or something. So we put it, everything on, on, on these columns. And um, it was tremendous, this, the, the, sh the social things which were always happening around the building. There were always people around the building. There were peepe people under the building. There were parties under the building. And uh, um, it was also the, the, the cheapest hotel in Kassel uh, during the documenta. People were sleeping also under the, bu under the building. And um, then Graham, there were a few artists who were chosen immediately for, uh, for this project. And one of the, we had some, and it was a good basis for us also during the discussions. But on one of the artists which, who really was one of the first who was chosen for the building was uh, Dan Graham. And he, 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 he said that the building was reminding him of the, uh, of the rock and roll song, song of the 50s under the boardwalk. And, uh, uh, and he, he, he made one, I hope I have one slide of it, I don't know. Uh, his, uh, his, uh, he made a portico in the building. Um, uh, we also discussed with our, the, the, the painters we knew if, if it could be done that there would, could be so much light coming into the building and that the maybe there would be no and then clots of light on the paintings and, and uh, uh, most of them uh, um, said that they, they could agree with such a, an extreme exposure. It was like, you know, the, the paintings nearly became like billboards towards, uh, towards the landscape. And that was something we liked. So at a certain moment, I, I read a text of, uh, uh, of Gerhard Richter, who is one of the, of the uh, sc uh, artists who was showing in this building. But he was, he was speaking about that a painter uses his, uh, his uh, painting some some, something like boards he's showing to the world. And uh, that was an also an idea that the painting should be also like something which was really not clearly but visual from from outside and um, yeah. it was um, a kind of an experience to see that uh, to see that uh, yeah you, uh, it's uh, it's indeed this is the uh, uh, and it's maybe b a better image this is the uh, the portico of the the uh, that uh, then Graham has made in the building this kind of diagonal uh, pavilion in, world, in, in the building itself, uh, which was related to one of the, the uh, one of the doors. Yeah, some. Uh, it seemed that the building uh, was inspiring for uh, for a lot of artists to really use the building, uh, like uh, Martin Poirier. He cut it out uh, a hole in the floor and he put it his his uh, his yurt uh, above it. Other, another artist cut it in the in the metal walls. This was like a, for for mo for many artists, the building was that light that it was very tempting for them to use it as a kind of uh, can uh, or, or or something where you put sardines in or something and you can open. Um, 
The, 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 the five pavilions uh, uh, were related uh, uh, to each other li by little bridges. And uh, so there was this kind of uh, zigzag walk through the building. And um, um, yeah, this, this specific inside outside uh, relation. Uh, some people said uh, that they were very happy. Uh, with this building that they know and then it's the only exhibition hall where you can get a smoke now and now and then yeah. Yeah. And so some some of the uh, there were this kind of interfacing relation uh, relations also to some uh, in between the pavilions like here uh, the, the the piece of um, Eran Sharf on both sides of the uh, who is an uh, Israeli artist and who is working with Wu and think on both sides of the. Um, yeah. okay. I should. Um, no. Well, this is work of a Belgian painter, uh, Raoul de Keizer. And the photo photographs of uh, Thomas Strut, of uh, photos, simply photos of his friends. And this is a uh, well-known room and much discussed room uh, of uh, Gerhard Richter. Um, it's, an, it's, a, it's a work we really worked together. It's our, it was our proposal to it, uh, the color was not that hard uh, in, in reality, but we really proposed to um, to put his uh, abstract paintings he made in that period. Uh, it was like um, yeah, it was like strokes he made on on uh, sometimes horizontal but mostly vertical, like you know, like a kind of. Uh, it was like related to Mondrian also the structure, but in a in a very uh, in a more, um, yeah, in another treatment, of course. But I I I we were talking to him, and I, I, I said to him that these paintings uh, had for me some kind, thing, uh, some kind of organic uh, quality and made me thinking, uh, uh, Richter is never afraid to, to see something in his abstract painting. You really can say it looks like this or that. He likes that. And uh, I was thinking, I was thinking about, um, I don't know the English word of it, but a kind of vegetable uh, green is which is growing along lakes and things like that, and something kind of organic. And um, uh, and I was at the same time we visited uh, Weimar, and I was seeing the the uh, um, cabinet of of Goethe, his his mineralogical cabinet. And then I pr we proposed to him to make a cabinet looking east because the windows were looking east. And uh, if he would try to to um, to use this uh, this background for his paintings, and um, and also the experiment he, he we were discussing to put the paintings on two uh, different registers, uh, one above each other. And um, he said, I will do, I will try it. And he made a complete uh, uh, reconstruction of our plan in his studio. And I said, I, is it, am, I, am I allowed to paint the walls white at the very last moment? So he said, yes, but uh, please not because they are so expensive. And he, uh, finally, he, he has put, put these things on it. And he had made this uh, very beautiful little painting one one painting which was uh, figurative uh, at the end of his uh, whole room uh, which was like uh, flowers and and uh, I, f I found it very extraordinary uh, that uh, an artist working in at uh, in our times paints flowers at, uh, yeah. it's maybe very normal it's maybe yeah maybe things uh, can be very very 
direct. What is more colorful than flowers, of course? Uh, uh, it was a very remarkable room, I have to say. Uh, second part. I don't know exactly what the next project. Oh yes. Um, this are now are coming to to two projects. We we have put it uh, together uh, for one reason, just separated by something small. But I, s I told you it's nearly impossible to analyze our own work, but still there is something very sp uh, um, yeah, uh, rare that we have some kind of attitudes when we are really working in a landscape like this uh, landscape surrounding Ghent. And the other project I want to show you, which is really in the, in the city of Brussels, and, uh, uh, and that, that there are, there are ab uh, absolute relations between the, the way uh, these buildings are uh, referring to uh, a very wide space around them, but then they have a specific uh, own expression in the two different things. One project is a penthouse in Russia, which, which I will show immediately, and this is a, is a farm, is a, is a, is a, a science uh, a research place on, on plants, and the farmhouse, which, uh, which is uh, which has a program of uh, um, um, the place where they put the tools they use on the land, I don't know, the, the storage, uh, and uh, laboratory uh, spaces and also an apartment for the, for the concierge and, uh, and uh, office things. All it had to be really a low budget building we are extremely proud about the price of this building, which is extremely cheap. And uh, it had to be a very, very low budget building because it did it's, it's used for research and, and, and research means uh, low profile in the, U in, in the way you treat, uh, uh, you treat uh, building. Um, but so we had to, to, to pack the whole program in one block and still uh, we wanted to express the meaning of the building which is referring, which is uh, the center of, uh, of the testing fields which are uh, surrounding the building. And um, uh, uh, so the, uh, the, the main thing of the building is the surrounding, or is the, is the, it's, the, uh, it's the gallery which is made around the building, which is uh, like the in-between of um, all these fields surrounding the building and and the inside of the building, which is uh, uh, which is nearly purely a com com container where things are stocked. There is no real activity inside the building, and um, but the workers are always going around the building, are doing specific activities uh, under this uh, roof, and it was something. Uh, it was for us an experience to um, how you can uh, uh, treat a building and, and uh, consider the very long uh, perspectives you will have on the building and, and how it would... Uh, um, uh, so the roof is um, it's like also a topographical, a little bit a topographical uh, is, is has found this form by the in internal topographical situation, uh, external to topogra topographical situation, and the internal need for different heights in the building. A very, a very high hall for these big machines they use on the land. A very modest low height for the for the apartment on the corner. A medium height. And, and finally, we found something that could be covered in one, uh, in one direct uh, um, uh, plain uh, roof. Mm. 
it's um, it, 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 first there were like normal glass houses building uh, built in the, the normal ones you can buy, and um, it's also the, the the building has to be the center of maybe a bigger de development with uh, other uh, laboratories, which will uh, will will be continued. It's, bu it's built by. Uh, uh, the, 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 the roof is covered by a kind of uh, double plywood uh, plates and uh, the, the walls are made out of uh, gas concrete uh, panels. Mm -hmm. Also, the the same thing, the roof um, is uh, moving there where uh, higher spaces are needed. And the, the wideness of the gallery is also like wider there where specific activities uh, uh, have to take place. Uh, I don't know how you call this in English, but uh, when, when you beating the, I don't know, the, the cross, it happens on the thing. I uh, have very few inside views of the, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a hall for the machine. And it's are uh, the offices, but not finished yet. Um, I want to uh, compare um, this uh, project uh, in, in, uh, with a similar approach, but in, with, with another, another, another idea also. Uh, uh, this is um, a penthouse which is uh, placed on an existing building in, in, um, in the center of Brussels, in, in the north. Uh, next to the center of Brussels, um, and it was it was a, a kind of same project, uh, a kind of same attitude toward the project, um, pointing from very far on where we wanted to place this element. It's like the 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 the, the box you see on the roof uh, is like a guest house where people where art if it's an art gallery in Brussels. And um, uh, guests are very often, uh, the artists are very uh, often staying there for longer times. And they, are, they, they use this uh, place as a kind of guest house. And uh, it has a specific empla emplacement in, in Brussels. But um, it was for us the team a little bit, the team of the individual in the city, how, how you could express this being there for, uh, as an artist for, uh, for some time, uh, you have really the feeling of being there alone, or very constant, but being alone. And, and that was something which was, for us, important, that, that, that feeling, making a place where you, you really have some kind of, uh, from your own person, a relation towards uh, the whole of the town. It's also of course, uh, when you're on top of a roof, you have always this. But this, this we wanted to express this, this, this uh, the situation of one towards the, 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 the everything. And so we, we decided to make this, this glass building on the roof to, and to place it really like, like if you lay down a book on a table, precisely there, or not there, but there. Um, like using the, the building, which is like a kind of uh, Art Nouveau building, using the building as a kind of circle on which you can place things. And uh, there was this thing, there was another thing like a kind of paravent, uh, but you cannot see it very well on the, we, we built around the, the elevator, the, 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 the technical uh, box of the elevator. And at, at that uh, point, uh, we um, we were um, um, 
we, we were thinking about the project as a kind of uh, silent life, the way you, you put things on, uh, in, in a silent life, like in a, in a, in a, in a, in a 17th century uh, Dutch painting, for instance, you see like disorder uh, because it's always like a, a, a dirty kitchen you're looking at. At the same time, you see order, but on, on, a, on an other, uh, on an other level, and that was what what we were uh, doing. Also, we wanted to be the box just there because you had the, the angle from the street. You could see it like that, and from another angle you could see it like that. And uh, then this is paravent. You, you see, don't see it, but it plays a role when you're on top on the roof. Uh, but there was something missing, uh, still missing. Something which uh, there were only two things, two volumes. And it didn't work well. And um, and and w st when at the moment that we were doing the rough sketches, we we were talking about the project to to the uh, owner, and also what can we do? And then maybe we we introduced um, we, we we were talking about the project to the German sculptress or sculptor. I don't know if you translate sculptress is a good English word. Uh, Isa Gensken. And uh, she made this uh, uh, frame sculpture, which is bending on uh, over the street, uh, which is called camera. And uh, the three together form like a kind of uh, dialogue on top of the roof. And um, also there were like three very, uh, unfortunately, and then I don't have any plan on, on but the, the, they were like th there are three very different kind of types of of, of uh, form, like this linear form of the frame, the the, the volumetrical uh, glass house, and then a more organic form, which is forming the uh, paravent, which is also happening like in a silent life. You have the the fruit and the book and the the, the bottle and things like that. Yeah. The, the sculpture means also to, to be also a little uh, this fragile to be fragile and then to, to express also a little bit of danger <coughs> bending over the street. Uh, there was like a, a, a big needed a big construction to, to add to, to, to fix this building uh, to, to fix this uh, sculpture on, on the building. Yeah, we destroyed uh, partly the building to construct it, uh, the thing. Yeah, it looks very simple, but it feels yeah, kind of difficult. Yeah, it looks so simple. It's leaning, but it cannot lean because it's much uh, higher than, than this. Uh, so it's really attached to, to the floor. Unfortunately, no slides of the final um, interior. Yeah, what I, what I wanted to tell you, yes, is that uh, what's important also the, the idea of the silent life is that um, by saying I want to put this volume like over there, uh, I was thinking about the Greeks who built their temple just there in the, on a critical place in the landscape, and we felt also a little bit like that, like putting it there. Of course, you have a conflict with the existing structure of uh, the building, because the building have, has its own steel structure, and you want to put them. And the interior is just expressing this: uh, this uh, how you bring over this element of weight and uh, towards the towards the uh, the basic structure of the building. And this was. Uh, generating the interior, the interior of the, of the, of the thing. But I'm, I'm sorry, I have not good slides of the. Yeah. This is just to to do something, a small project again, as even smaller project again. Uh, this is the project we did together um, with um, Juan Munoz in 
Barcelona. At the end of the Barceloneta, uh, uh, in front of the aquarium, the, uh, we, uh, Juan Munoz invited us as architects. It was like an opposite thing. It was the, we were invited by him to do uh, uh, something together to make a, and uh, we, were, we were, we could look, it was very, it was in the period of the Olympic Games, it was in the, in, uh, and some artists were invited to Barcelona to make a, 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 a public sculpture. Um, uh, other ones were uh, Mario Metz and um, Cunelis and, uh, yeah. Yeah, also with who? Rebecca, Rebecca Horn, yeah, and, and uh, Rukrim also. Uh, but um, uh, uh, Munoz invited us to make uh, a building for his group of sculptures. It was not the idea in the beginning to make a group of sculptures. Uh, also, this uh, is something he, he is doing more uh, often, that, that are these figures who are standing next to each other and he calls this uh, conversation pieces. And um, to make a specific spot for this, uh, uh, a, a, a place for this, and we, we were looking for different places, but finally we, uh, we found this uh, um, place in front of the old aquarium of, uh, of um, Barcelona, at the end of the Barceloneta, and um, it was a good place, and uh, then we, we thought to make a little pavilion for the sculptures. And the idea was uh, of uh, to uh, the idea was to make a fountain also. Uh, the roof would be a kind of sprinkler uh, thing. We would uh, make uh, uh, and the sculpture would be be all time in the, in the rain. And, uh, and the, the title Juan Munoz gave to this uh, project was the house where it always rained. We were also, of course, very, uh, by making the drawing for the pavilion we have built it, we were very influenced by, by uh, existing buildings in, uh, in uh, Barcelona for the botanical gardens uh, over there, but we converted it in, into a kind of uh, steel structure. We are just very close also to the beach of, uh, of uh, Barcelona. They are really on a very uh, interacting point. They have this facade behind. The building has this facade of the, of the, of the um, aquarium behind, but then you have also the views uh, as well uh, towards the, 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 the city of Barcelona, towards the open sea uh, on the <coughs> other hand. It's still not functioning really with uh, now the, uh, this, is a, this is a later a later uh, in the meanwhile uh, they have really made the place very very nice and, and around it but still the sprinklers are not installed at the moment it's a difficult thing to to maintain people throw uh, cans in it and all kind of stuff and uh, but And that's um, uh, to, uh, to end uh, as a kind of similar project of the beginning project. This is um, a house in a small, very small town in the south of, uh, in the south of Ghent, uh, Aldenarde. And um, we, um, we worked on this house uh, uh, since... Um, uh, 82 or 83 and we continue to work on it till 
94, 95. And it was also like a project of points in the house, just points that we, we, uh, we made something. It was never, uh, it was never a program in a whole of, uh, of, uh, of uh, making the house completely new or something. It started with very simple things, new toilets and so on and so on. But it became like a story uh, 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 of things uh, uh, which are which were for us like uh, it was this house was very important because we tried out uh, things we we used we used in uh, in other buildings for instance this um, loggia we we we, we have uh, constructed um, uh, like for us like a team we we used in an, uh, in other buildings also like hanging glass at the facade as a kind of very thin um, um, bliss was it up in the uh, I don't know how it was very thin uh, screen yes but you know a member yes member between between yeah, members is, is very good but between uh, uh, something which is ha happening all the things which are happening inside of a building and uh, and and the the the, the town the town in this case uh, this is a, a house along uh, uh, a river and at the other side of the river uh, 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 river you have the panor panorama of the the town of the old medieval town of uh, of um, Aldenab. it's also a very beautiful church uh, close to the to the house uh, in the very early Gothic uh, Flemish style. Yeah, this is this loggia. There were ins inscri ins ins inscriptions in the glass of this lo loggia by uh, Thierry de Cordier, uh, a, a Belgian artist. Yeah, we did very very elementary things, like for instance cutting this old door uh, to make a little door in it, and then uh, how can we? Uh, put all things again together uh, and yeah the garden was one it's really an old project and I uh, it's all really a bit distant to 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 what I when I see it now but we did the garden uh, and and we did this path leading from it's a very complicated house but full of of uh, stories and so but it was very inside you, ne you never had the feeling of the garden which is a kind of small, nice uh, city, uh, town, a small town garden. And we did the path leading uh, inwards, uh, uh, an orangerie which was existing, existing when we came, but we just, it was just uh, uh, completely rusted and we reconstructed this uh, thing. Yeah. All in this narrow situation uh, is happening a lot of things. A balcony we added at the children's playroom. We made an, uh, a screwed uh, window for the kitchen. And then we made a kind of uh, shelter for the wood. And it was like generating a very early uh, design, uh, this concrete thing you see over there, a very early design of a a little bank building we have made, and maybe it was also referred to the uh, referring to the farm house we did later on. The window with um, yeah the kitchen, but uh, the window. The only window look, uh, looking from the house to the garden, uh, the, they already, the owners already decided to make the zinc, is this an English word, the zinc over there. And it was a good uh, possibility to, um, to, to visual, visualize the statement from whom, I don't know, Duchamp or, uh, or Lowe's, so who told us that the difference between sculpture and 
uh, architecture is blending. Oh, is that is it? Oh. Resuming. <coughs> no, I will make it go back a little bit. Uh, also, for different uh, elements the playroom of the children, just cutting a hole in the roof, um, like this. And the, the library, we, uh, we made a, a kind of chimney bringing in the light in the space. <coughs> it was also like um, um, the bridge that separated uh, the um, the girls' children from the only boy in the family. It was one of his wishes to be um, a, bit, a bit distant. Uh, sometimes things look nice when you're still building them. It's, uh, it's this kind of things we are, uh, we, which get lost uh, later on. I think this is really one of the last ones. This is a table we have made, but I should say something more about the project, but I think it's clear. Huh? Well, <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's just all this, all these small things we did. It's an extremely complex. This was the last staircase we built only a few years ago. And Christina Iglesias added one cupola on this building too. I think this is the end of my, my um, uh, presentation. If you want to discuss with me, I'm prepared to. I'm all. I'm all. All yours. Thank you. It's more difficult for me. It's more difficult this this this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have to, I, I, 
I, I, I told you that in the beginning we had this, this um, specific discussion to try to say what, what, what are our positions and so on. And then, uh, of course, I, I'm also thinking about uh, if, you, if you're mentioning um, yeah, uh, Gerhard Metz, who's yeah, um, using architectural images as also um, direct metaphors coming out of the history of uh, arch yeah. I never would invite him in, uh, I don't know why but um, mm -hmm. I don't know how to answer it but I don't know what the question uh, exactly was but yeah, yeah. yeah just was it, it, that, is that sort of collaboration is, is sort of a desirable thing to pursue yeah and sort yeah. of yeah. edging that way yeah. 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 And, and it's true. Yeah. Both trying to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is yeah 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 I understand yes yeah, it would be you know, it would be yeah much more difficult and um, it's a different thing with with for instance uh, somebody as uh, Van Graham because he's also making pavilions, glass houses, and things like that, and still, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, question. yeah, I think so. No, I mean, I, I think this is, uh, it is it's a more specific case, and I've, I've uh, known uh, Paul Lawrence many more and he has added uh, some art teaching mm -hmm. and things together, and, you know, in Belgium, we have a staff work that they hardly have Mm. And uh, there is really very little opportunity for architects to stand out and talk about their work. Very mm. little, because they're all so busy. Mm. And so what is very interesting is they said that it's like how Professor Van Dijk uh, practiced with this. He made them very conscious of finding always tools uh, mm. that you question things, mm. in a way to, to displace themselves. Mm. Uh, always, I mean, the projects that you saw tonight are not simply something that they were given. They are actually chosen. Mm -hmm. So choosing different scales to work with, different <coughs> choosing different sites and locations, working with different people who have very different interests to do. He was forced to, to have Carlos Mas in, in the building, mm -hmm. who are all very conscious ways of looking outside of yourself. And, and I think in that sense, the collaboration of mm -hmm. between the artist and the architect, I would say, uh, it is a very specific case. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would find it very difficult to answer is that is this uh, something to pursue mm -hmm. in every case? But I would say, in, in this case, it is, it's for me, it's when, when I look at the work, it's, it's really a conscious decision to, to question yourself, mm -hmm. to have a dialogue, mm -hmm. which is, I, I found very little in, 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 in Belgium, precisely because everybody is, is so busy. Mm -hmm. that it's, there is very little time and mm -hmm. little occasion where you would, you would discuss Mm -hmm. Well, it's true. It's, uh, yeah. I d think uh, there's no general rule also. It happens now and then. And uh, th there's no general rule to say, yeah, we should go on with it. Or um, It's all kind of occasional and, and, uh, and uh, also it has to happen. I'll say you has to accept your proposal of I want to cooperate with this artist. It's not something now. Let's put or let's put these two together, and it is something very. Um, so there are all very small projects also that have some relations and just to very big projects. Mm. I would like to continue uh, in some possibilities uh, to to an even, even larger scale. Um, yeah. We did also, you know, but that didn't 
mentioned this and that gave us some we did also like uh, a lot of um, exhibition design uh, also like for specific exhibitions uh, um, yeah also classical art but also like now the project in Boston we did um, and then it's very, very specific. You the, the, that's uh, an, an exhibition that goes on. Uh, it calls them inside the visible, and it goes. It will be shown here in in, uh, in London in the White Chapel uh, in at the end of the year. Um, and then you have to work with two. Uh, there are like forty artists, women artists, uh, in this exhibition and. Uh, <coughs> Uh, half of them are still alive, other ones are, uh, don't live anymore, and it's, it's, it's a very complicated thing, to, to how to treat work of somebody who doesn't live anymore. It's an specifically the work which is made by uh, a generation of artists who, who had who were who, whose personality was so important in 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 in, in the way they show their piece? It's so hard now um, how you can uh, how you can treat this. Then and and the opposite said how can you work with living artists who also like you know um, which is wh whom appearance is very important. Uh, more than maybe the material side of, of, of the work and how could you uh, bring this in relation to your building that would be an interesting um, thing to, to explore um, I think then there would be necessarily a, a long cooperation between the um, both of them architect and artist and, uh, um, But the artists we have worked together with, with uh, are maybe a little bit more of the classical type. It's really still the sculptor and it's still the, the painter and still it's, it's something you can handle easier than maybe uh, artists who are like working with, with um, you know, um, performance or partly which which which. Uh, uh, which is uh, which work is the material rest of a performance or something it's uh, so it's um, um, something we really, really would like to continue to but it's not like a rule because then it becomes stupid and uh, it's just happening mm -hmm. the way Yeah, we never would call our uh, our um, buildings like sculpture or, or, or refer. It's just, um, because this 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 emplacement of of, of a building on this way, also like the the farmhouse and so on, is it's going back to maybe a very traditional way of of using space in I was uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's true. It's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's right. We need a 